Okay, so now we're on page 58, and we're going to talk about some facts um, of inverse functions that you should remember from Algebra 2. So f is the original function, and its inverse is denoted by f to the negative 1, or f inverse of x. Ways to test algebraically that f and g are inverses. f of g of x has to equal x, and g of f of x has to equal x. And we sometimes write these as f open circle g x and g open circle and at some point your mathematical mathematical career teacher may have said fog and goff and that's just you know math shorthand both have to equal x so we're doing an example it says verify that f of x and g of x these two functions are inverses and it says you cannot simply just find the inverse of one and match it to the other we actually have to do f of g of x and g of f of x so Composition of functions. I'm going to do f of g of x, which is the same thing as saying f of x squared plus 16. So I'm going to go to my f function right here, and this x right there is going to become an x squared plus 16. So this is going to equal plus or minus the square root. This x has to become an x squared plus 16, and then I have this minus 16 out here. I'm just going to use a different color. This plus 16 and minus 16 are going to cancel out, and then you have the square root of x squared, which is just x. So a little smiley face, f of g of x equals x. But you're only half done. You have to do the other side too. So now I have to do g of f of x. So which is g of plus or minus the square root of x minus 16. So this is going to equal, this x right here is going to become this whole thing. So I have plus or minus the square root of x minus 16 squared and then I have my plus 16 on the outside. Well, the square root squared undoes each other, so now you have x minus 16 plus 16. The 16s cancel out. Life is amazing. And you get this equals x. So you know that g of f of x equals x. Because both of these equal x, you have verified and proven that these two functions are inverses. And it is going to happen on your test that you are asked to prove or disprove if two items are inverses. You must do both of them. Only doing one side or doing the other side is only half the credit. Okay, so now let's talk about some fun facts of inverses. If I have some function f and this blue circle down here is its domain, all of the domain of f is going to become the range of my inverse and the range of f is going to become the domain of my inverse. So the domain of f becomes the range of the inverse, and the range of f becomes the domain. So the domain of the original becomes the range. I'm going to write up here O for original and I for inverse. So my domain of my original becomes my range, and my range becomes my domain. And same thing, if you know the range of the inverse, you know the domain of the original, and if you know the domain of the inverse, you know the range of the original. And so now we're going to go on to page 59. So page 59 talks about actually finding an inverse. How do you actually find an inverse? Instead of proving that two things are inverses, how do you find the actual inverse. So that's what we're going to do. So un, um, you basically undo to find an inverse. It's like putting your socks and shoes on. So when you get dressed in the morning, you put your socks and then your shoes on. But when you get undressed, your shoes have to come off before your socks. So the mathematical steps are right here, and you may want to bubble them. You're going to switch x and y. You're going to resolve for y and verify. So right here I have y equals... 6x plus 4 over 4x plus 5. So it says switch x and y. So I have x equals 
6y plus 4 over 4y plus 5. I'm going to multiply the denominator over, so I get x times 4y plus 5 equals 6y plus 4. And then what I'm going to do is distribute this x in. So I get 4yx plus 5x equals 6y plus 4. And I know this looks really ugly, but what you need to do is you need to put the things with the y on the same side. So if I go up here, I need to move this 6y over to the other side. So I have 4yx minus 6y equals, and I'm going to end up subtracting the 5x over, 4 minus 5x. We did this because these both have y in common, so now I can pull out a y. 4x minus 6 equals 4 minus 5x, and now I hope you see that you can solve for y, and I'm not going to write just y, I'm actually going to write y inverse. Please make sure you remember to write the inverse because we have now found the inverse. 4 minus 5x over, and I divide this over, 4x minus 6. And you have now found the inverse. And don't worry, we're going to practice some more tomorrow. Okay, then down below it says graphically, so let's look at this graphically. If I have some original function, and my original function is 2x minus 3, and that I have also given you the inverse, um, I can reflect it over the line y equals x. So what I'm saying here is, if this is my original right here, that's this, I can reflect it over the line y equals x to graphically find the inverse, which is this piece right here. And that makes sense because, let me go back a page, if my domain becomes my range. That's like saying all of my x's are going to become my y's. And if my range, all my y's, become all my x's, well that means that x becomes y and y becomes x. You're reflecting it over the line y equals x because your y's are becoming your x's and your x's are becoming your y's. And then there's an, uh, another example down below. So on page 60 you are asked to draw the inverse and um, I am the world's worst drawer, so this is going to be extra fun for me. But we're going to reflect it over this line, y equals x. And the easiest thing I think to do is that since I gave you some ordered pairs, I would actually just flip them. So you know that this ordered pair right here is 2, 5, so let's graph 5, 2. And you know that this ordered pair right here is negative 2, negative 11. So instead of graphing negative 2, negative 11, we're going to graph negative 11, which is going to be way over here, negative 2. And then these points in between, so this is negative 1, 4. So I'm going to graph 4, negative 1. And then this one right here is um, 0, negative 3, so I'm going to graph, oh, I graphed this one in the wrong place, let's go back, hang on. This ordered pair right here is negative 1, negative 4, so negative 4, negative 1. And then this one right here is going to be negative 3, 0, because it was 0, negative 3, so it flips to negative 3, 0. And this one right here is 1, negative 2, so we're going to graph negative 2, one. And so now we can tell that this graph does something like that. And the last little piece of this notes is um, talking about one-to-one -one and many-to-one functions. So we use the vertical line test to tell us something's a function. So if I draw my vertical lines, we know that this is a function. But we can use the horizontal line test to decide if something's many-to-one or one-to-one. -one. If I draw these horizontal lines, since I only touched the graph one time, this is one to one. If I go over here, we know that this, oops, sorry. If I go over here, this function, when I draw my horizontal lines, is going to be a function. 
or my vertical t lines, it's going to be a function. But when I draw my horizontal lines, you touch the graph more than once, which is going to be many to one. And you need to know something. Many to one functions, um, their inverse is not going to be a function. That's because if you reflect this over the line y equals x, your graph is going to look like that. And so these horizontal lines become vertical lines. And when you do your vertical line test, you can only touch the graph once, which means this inverse function would fail the vertical line test. So its inverse is not a function. And now you have your notes done.